All right, Mr. Jason, I've finished your analysis on your website from an SEO perspective, and you're going to have to bear with me for the uh, the croaky voice, but um, all the information is all here. So first thing we do with uh, an audit is to run an on-page uh, analysis from an SEO perspective, and it's just a little tool um, that we use. It's actually you can do it from our website itself, but it ge generates a report which I'll uh, send you separately. So this is more from a, a technical on-page point of view, and it's not the be-all, end-all, but there's just little things that can be fixed very easily by your web guy to improve uh, the overall SEO standing. So this first one here needs attention is it's not listed in dmoz.org which is uh, an old but still very relevant uh, web directory it's free to list but it takes a long time to uh, get the, the site actually showing up in there but um, you know you can just get one of your guys or us or whatever to list you in dmoz it's quite quite powerful uh, directory um, we're found just for not very competitive sites just having a listing in dmoz can get them ranking um, quite well so I won't go through this all in detail because it's all pretty self-explanatory, but there's just little uh, on-page technical factors that you might want to um, get your web person to have a look at. And then again, uh, if you're going to be changing your website, then all this is going to change um, anyway, so it's probably not going to be relevant. Things like this, you, um, you should use hyphens instead of underscores in, in your links or with uh, image names. Um, didn't find a H2 tag, you know, this is just sort of technical web stuff. Um, this one here is, you know, you've only got 193 words roughly on the page. Um, you can get away with less words on the home page, but Google is all about good, high quality, relevant content. So uh, when you do the new site, I would get, I would put some, uh, get some more content for the home page. Even if it's below the fold down the bottom, it's still good to have, this says 1500 per page, but on your home page, if you can sort of have at least 500, that's, um, that's, that's better. And by putting more words on the page, it'll fix this, this issue here with the um, content to code ratio. This one here is just talking about the keywords. Are the keywords, uh, are they in the title tag, your description tag, all that kind of stuff. It really depends on what you want to aim your main, um, what, what keywords you want to be aimed for your, for your home page. Uh, inline CSS, again, um, just little technical things. Uh, your author tags, uh, looks, home page looks fine on mobile. A few of the social things to, to look at. No Google Plus profile found. Again, it's not the be all end all, but they're just little things that you can do to, um, to just make absolutely every tiny little thing that you can fix easily then you might as well just do it to increase your overall on page ranking hot frog you already listed in um, these ones here are american companies so i'm not i wouldn't be too concerned about them as long as you've got white pages true local um, those sort of sort of ones so yeah that's that's pretty much it I'll, like i said i'll send you this uh, separately uh, there's not a huge amount of major issues with that um, on page order but just a little few techie things that your guys can fix up Still on uh, the technical side of things, we use a HTML validator program, you can see here, and putting your website in. Um, most of the time I find there's like 20 or 30 problems in here, but you've only got eight, and a couple of them are just warnings and only one error, and this is just, uh, again, it's like on-page stuff, not the be-all, end-all, just little things that your web guys can fix up, so that, that's pretty cool. The next one was seeing if it's mobile friendly and the first tool showed the home page was. This is just, again, uh, Google's own own uh, tool to show, to um, test if you're, you've got to do it page by page in this where you can actually go to the Google Webmaster Tools and look at overall, which we will later. But for the home page, it comes back as yes, this page is mobile friendly. Another thing I look at is duplicate content on the web. So if you go to copyscape.com, put your website address in, it'll come back and tell you if there's any other sites that have the same copy. So sometimes what happens when a web guy builds your website, if you get him to write some of the content, he might just scrape it or copy it from another site, which is no good for SEO. So you want to make sure you've got 100% original content on your uh, 
site and again this is just checking the home page but uh, there's no duplicates found so that's a good thing as well. Next we're going to get to the Google Webmaster Tools. So I logged in, you've added me already so that I've got access to the reports here and I went to search appearance, HTML improvements. So here you'll see that there's six pages which have short meta descriptions. Again a little technical issue, very easy to fix. And eight pages that have duplicate title tags which is not that great. Google wants you to have when, when they say long, at least start, you know, reasonably descriptive and certainly 100% unique meta title and meta description tags. So this is just a little thing where your web guys, if you pointed that out to them, they'd know how to fix it. For SEO purposes, we always want to make sure that site hasn't been penalised by Penguin as, as I talked to you about before. So if you go to search traffic and then manual actions, click on that, it'll tell you if there's any manual penguin penalties. Now it doesn't take into account algorithmic penalties but if someone's app from Google has actually checked out your site for various reasons and they have determined that you've been trying to game the system with artificial link building or other things they don't like they will give you a manual action and it will be listed in this part of your Google Webmaster Tools account. So nothing listed in here. Mobile usability so before we looked at the home page but this one here at the entire site. So there's two pages that have issues that you need your web guide to fix. Again, if you're going to change your website, this is probably all not relevant right now. You'll just go back and redo it when the new website's launched or at least ready to launch. So just a couple of little issues that Google would suggest to fix it from a, a mobile friendly point of view. Two, two, two pages in the site, which is pretty good. Also look for crawl errors. And this was one that I I noticed on yours had quite a few issues. So there's 21 pages have not been found. So these are crawl errors. Last time this was uh, checked was the 20th of August. So if you click on this first one, for example, contact, you'll see that this is the page that has an error. If you click on here, linked from, you'll see these are all the places that link to this page. So you've got internal links here and you've also got some of these external links pointing to your site. The problem is they're pointing to this forward slash contact and if I open that page you should see it come up with a 404 or page not found error. There you go, 404 page not found. So what this tells me if I hover over this contact us I can see in the lower left hand corner here it's contact dash us. So they've changed the name of the page but the old name forward slash contact is still out there and in fact it's still being linked from places. So the easy way to fix this is get your web guide to do a 30, what they call a 301 redirect from this old URL to the new contact us URL and once you've done that redirect you can actually go back and I'll cancel that, go back and, and that'll, that'll fix this problem. So you go through and you just fix those all one by one either with redirects or fixing up the links if they're broken links or whatever so there's, there's a few on there to be fixed. Again it's not the end of the world but every little thing you can do which doesn't cost a lot of money or you just get, get your IT person to do you might as well do it to try and beat your competitors. Next thing I check is robot text this one here so this is pretty basic I generally add a lot of uh, bot blocking information here to stop automated bots from visiting, visiting sites but uh, you can also go back to your Google Webmaster Tools and check the robots text. When I did this the first time there, there was an error that came up for this and I couldn't, uh, now this is fine now, oh here we go one error, that should say site map not site, that's the error so get your guy to fix that. When I actually typed this link in and had a look forward slash XML sitemap, your, your sitemap is there, that is all correct but it's just the uh, in the robots text that is wrong. It should say site map, not site. Another thing to check in your Google Webmaster account is you go to other resources and we want to look at the page load speed, which is a uh, page speed insights here. It's a, another factor in the, in the ranking algorithm. So if you put your site in here, it'll do its little analysis and it'll come back and tell us where we can improve the page load speed. It's all about providing the user the best experience and that's why Google will rank your site higher above competitors 
if your site looks better on a mobile, loads faster, all those sort of things. So back in the days there was like less than 100 ranking factors, now there's many hundreds. So whatever you can do that's cheap and easy to fix, you might as well just do it. So from a mobile perspective, there's quite a few things that need to be fixed here. So you need to optimize your images for mobile. I mean, again, it's all techie stuff. Consider fixing these. If we go to desktop, the score's a little bit better. There's still, again, image optimization do a few things to make your website load faster for visitors. Another thing I want to check is your redirections from non-www versions of the URL to www if that's what the site is built in, which I noticed yours is. So you don't want to have this without the www actually display the home page because you're creating two identical pages of your website, duplicate content issues. It's it's not what you want for SEO. So a simple thing I do is just type in the website with just the HTTP and sure enough it redirects you to www which uh, is what you want so that's all good. Next thing I do is have a look at your search analytics in, in Google Webmaster Tools. You can also have a look at Google Analytics itself but Google Analytics no longer gives you the keywords that were used to come to your site whereas in Google Webmaster Tools you can still get a lot of that information. So what is here is the ability to go in and extract data that can give you uh, some more opportunities for marketing. So basically if you tick all these boxes up here, clicks, impressions, click through rate and position, it will give you some data here for the last 30 odd days it should be, so August 2nd so roughly, uh, roughly a month's worth of data, you can change that to any time. So you can see that detector inspector, people doing typing that in, you had the most number of impressions, that means the most number of times that the site was displayed for that search term, and a very high click-through rate because of course you averaged position number one. Flipping it around the other way, 59 searches, inspector detector, 13 clicks, not such a high through click-through rate, which is interesting, and also you're averaging uh, around just, just a little bit below position three. So these are keywords that you are already ranking for and where you're ranking is this position here. So you, what I use this list for is doing keyword research. So if, if you look at this list, you might have seen some stuff on there that you've never even thought of ranking before, but then you look here, okay, so photoelectric smoke alarms, 370 searches sorry, 370 times in the last four weeks somebody typed this in to Google and your site showed up somewhere in the results. Now you're back on page, sorry, back on position number 15 which is halfway down page 2 but you know you, you find you might not even really be trying to rank for these keywords but if you're going to get 370 uh, possible visitors and it's something that's relevant to your business then it's a keyword that you can add into your your SEO marketing. So another thing you can do is just by tweaking and making sure you've got these keywords on your page a couple of times in your metadata, that sort of stuff, you can jump like, you know, like jump a, a massive number of positions without even going to link building or any of that kind of stuff. So if you're not trying to rank for some of these keywords, but you're ranking quite quite well already, like I mean I don't know if you're trying to rank for this or if it's uh, carbon monoxide testing is something you're even interested in, but you know you're already at position number four without trying. So the idea with this one is you can sort in uh, impressions from highest to lowest. So alarm, not too broad, smoke alarm insulation, smoke alarms too broad, too broad, smoke alarm testing, I know that's one you, you're already looking at. So these are just good little things that information you can go, well, gee, I didn't even know that this whatever keyword's got 60 people, you know, and just, just I use it for finding keywords that your site is already ranking for at, at, at some level and using that just to tweak your, your SEO to increase your traffic even more. For keyword research, I, I download this list. I also take the list that the client gives me from the start with some keywords they want to rank for. And if they're running a pay-per-click campaign, then we'd put those keywords into the pay-per-click campaign. Sorry, we'd take the keywords from the pay-per-click campaign. We combine all those keywords to create a, a master list and we would put those keywords into the Google Keyword Planner. This has gone through about three or four name changes since I got involved with 
SEO and everything but uh, currently it's uh, the Google Keyword Planner you put your keywords into the and when you uh, export the results you will get something like this now I'll just move this here I did this one before I spoke to you and then I spoke to you and we deleted some of the ones which weren't relevant but when I added those new ones in you gave me it's like put everything back in there so uh, which is a bit of a bugger but anyway these C keywords are the ones that I put in there and that that came from the ones you gave me plus the ones you were already ranking for some obvious ones and where it says keyword ideas these are the ones that it's come up so I don't know if you guys do any carbon monoxide detectors or whatever smoke alarm solutions fire alarm I mean I don't know this is where you go through and you, know, you might not want to rank for brands or or um, competitors or whatever but this is where you'd go through and you would delete uh, anything that is not super relevant to what your business offers whether it's a product or service you want to make sure that you're putting your SEO efforts and having your site rank for things that are highly relevant to your business so that when someone comes along they type in a keyword if they land on your site it's like yeah this is exactly what I want and of course they become a new customer so the good thing about the the keyword planner here is it gives you all this data so obviously the keywords itself but the average number of searches and for the settings on this one I actually had it set to in Victoria and New South Wales so you can specify all of Australia or just a city your whole state whatever for you I did the two states combined and that's that's the data here Now it's not exact but it is sort of an average and gives you uh, a bit of an idea on how many searches for these so obviously the more searches that a keyword gets the more opportunity you have of people coming to your website if it ranks high of course it still has to be relevant there's no point in having a million people come into your site if if they're coming off some keyword that absolutely is no relevance to your business whatsoever but the other thing too is you got to look at the competition if a keyword is extremely competitive and you know like weight loss or lose weight or stuff like that is a commonly used example uh, dog training tips all that kind of stuff then you know you might spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars uh, on SEO getting your site to rank for that keyword so you've got to balance up how many people are searching for it and how difficult is that keyword to rank for so one quick way uh, still using this is to see how many people are how many people are bidding on a keyword in AdWords and what their bid price is because if there's a lot of people bidding on it in AdWords you can bet that there's also going to be a lot of people trying to rank for it organically with with SEO. the other thing too is if they're willing to, to if the average bid price is quite high that means people are willing to spend five dollars twenty nine a click or six dollars forty two six dollars forty five a click these are keywords that people want to spend more money on nine bucks smoke alarm testing services smoke alarm legislation so again these ones will show you the more valuable keywords because people are willing to spend more money to to have their site rank for pay-per-click so you can eleven dollars eleven dollars so you can look at that and see which which keywords um, obviously have not obviously but generally should have a higher conversion rate because if people are willing to spend more money on it it's got to be a reason and so that's two ways you can just by downloading the, the information from the Google, Google Keyword Planner you can look at your competition and roughly uh, how many visitors per month once you have gone through and deleted all the keywords which are not relevant you want to see okay where are we starting from so you I will take the top 100 keywords based on the volume of searches and you can see where your site is ranking for now so this shows you you've got of the keywords that we imported we've got six are in the top three already 20 are on page one of Google 29 are on the, within the first two pages and so on so this just shows you of all those keywords I've typed in uh, I see ranking for fire alarms already photoelectric you're ranking for smoke alarm services and servicing uh, I set this to uh, Melbourne 3000 uh, zip code postcode 3000 so it's doing the search as if as it was searching from Melbourne so you know this gives you a snapshot of where your site is sitting for all these keywords and if you were to you know give a 
start with an SEO campaign, obviously this is your starting point. You want to uh, improve this every month by increase, increasing these figures here. Obviously the higher your site ranks for more keywords, the more traffic you're going to get to it and hopefully the more business. Now the other thing when we're doing an SEO audit, in fact uh, getting towards the end now uh, when we're doing an SEO audit is to look at your backlinks because backlinks are still the most important uh, ranking part of Google's uh, algorithm. Although it's much harder to game the system, Google's got a lot more clever about uh, finding and identifying people that have done uh, shady backlinks like what I pointed out to you before with your previous people. But to compare your site with your competitors, so uh, this is you in the first column, smart ha um, smarthousefire.com, Smoke Alarm Australia, SATS and Smoke Alarm Solutions were the main competitors. So of these ones, looking from an SEO or ranking perspective overall, uh, this particular piece of software has ranked Smoke Alarm Solutions as the overall winner. Just quickly what these stats mean, your that's the name of the tool, your power is basically the volume or number of links. So out of all these guys you have more of the power or volume of links. The trust factor is how good or you know what, what's your quality like of those links. So um, I don't know what happened here, I think this needs to be reset or something that's disappeared but you know your, your two is not very high so you've got lots of links but they're not a huge they're not uh, higher quality but your LRT power times trust is just two times four is eight so these guys two three two three they're all the same they've got you know roughly the same volume um, and the, and you're all sort of roughly the same in terms of the trust don't worry about Google page rank anymore because Google's not not updating it your Alexa traffic rank the lower is the better so you're winning there hosting is not really relevant this one here uh, it's done by US so it's not really uh, accurate Domain popularity, so how many different domains um, are linking to you, how many different IPs, these guys are kicking a lot of back, uh, kicking, kicking butt there, 5,000 links, one EDU link, no one's got any government links, 12 retreats, Facebook shares, so when you add everything up, you have five, what they call wins, uh, these guys over here have 10, so this is just a bit of a benchmark to show where you sit in relation to your competitors from an SEO, just a quick snapshot. Another thing I look at with sites is their backlink profile. Now I've actually had done this for you before as you know and sent through um, the reports. Uh, to do a, a QBL is a quick back, backlink report. It just shows um, how many links you've got from how many different domains and it gives you the anchor text cloud. So this is showing you the bigger the, bigger the cloud is it means there's more of that, that, vol that particular keyword. So what that means is you have the most number of links with Maria Kristen as the anchor text, in fact 17%. Now what concerns me is that sounds like it's the name of a Web 2.0 profile, so it's not, not ideal. But what you want to have is your brand anchor text here. So this is good, this is good, you know, even without that, just detectorinspector.com.au. You don't want to have too many money keywords in this cloud. And and as general rule of thumb, it should be between three and five percent as your money keywords. All these big ones here should just be brand, you know, even not having anything in there. Click here, visit site, this site, all that kind of stuff is, is what you want. Now, in terms of the actual backlink audit, as, as you know, like I said before, I, I sent you one um, before which showed uh, a lot of the links were spammy, artificially created, it could get you in trouble and that need to be cleaned up. I wanted to rerun another report today, just updated, but uh, it's still processing, so this is not ready. I'll send it to you when it's finished, just as a PDF, but I suspect it's gonna be very similar to the one I did before. I did upload the disavow list that your guy has submitted. Strangely, it was different to the one I gave you. Don't know what's going on there, but well, as I said, when this report's finished, I'll send that through to you separately. So that's pretty much from an, from an SEO perspective, you know, there's nothing glaringly bad apart from the, uh, the, the quality of a link, backlinks which we already knew about. And from an on-page technical aspect, there's not some, no major issues, so just a few little tweaks that your web guy can do to fix it, but again, if you're going to be doing a new website, I wouldn't even worry about that until the new website's done and then you just check, check the new, new site.